podcast listener. I'm Allison. I'm Amanda. I'm Christopher. And I'm Matt. And this is What Scares Us, a podcast where four friends share the movies that break our brains and trap us in an infinite loop. Brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library. Today we're talking about The Endless, the 2017 sci-fi horror film directed, produced by, and starring Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. Justin Benson also wrote the film, and Aaron Moorhead was the cinematographer and the lead visual effects artist, and they were both editors. So basically, these two guys made the movie. (laughs) A couple fun facts to get us started. This is considered a micro-budget movie. The budget is estimated to be just a couple hundred thousand dollars, which is basically nothing in the film world. This is their third movie, but it's the first movie where they received money through an actual film financier. Their first movie, Resolution, they self-financed through Justin's saving account (laughs) for a budget of $20,000. And their second movie, Spring, they financed through Justin's dad mortgaging his own house. Um, Justin and Aaron met as interns at Ridley Scott's production company, who we know from our previous episode on Alien. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot about um, their previous movie, Resolution, because it is a companion film to this one. So before we launch into our first uh, takes of this movie, please go watch it. Trust me, guys, you want to watch it without knowing anything about it. It will just make your viewing experience so much more fun. So take a peek and then come back and join us. So what did we think? It's not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, I realized I had seen it once before. What? Really? How? I think you had recommended it. <laughs> ah. That sounds right. Right. And I, uh, I didn't love it the first time. I enjoyed it more this time because I took a little bit more time to look at it and think about it. So that, that made it better for me. I had definitely never heard of this movie before <laughs> or these filmmakers. And uh, the first the first thing that I looked up when I was watching it was how much was this made for? And I couldn't – I don't – where did you find that figure about the $200,000? It's a – well, so Resolution, it's online is 20000 which okay. is the first movie. Mm-hmm. And then in one of the behind the scenes, Aaron says that he's never seen a million dollars in his life. So no. it's got to be less. So than. somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely I wanted to know how much it was made for. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, because it was pretty. I mean, it's very clearly an independent movie, but mm-hmm. um, but a pretty competent one. Because like uh, more often than not, they they they're not so great. Yeah. <laughs> so like um, this did have some of the things about independent movies that I don't love, but boy, was it ambitious. I now wish I had seen this companion film first. Yeah, it's um, Chris and Mike, the the gun nut tweaker and his friend. It's their story of how they get trapped in their loop. Oh. I only found out about the resolution tie-in while watching the making of that was on the Blu-ray or the DVD or whatever I had checked out. And that made me kind of think back like, huh, maybe I would have enjoyed it more or I would have noticed some little the way things were connected, like some of the found footage that they were watching in this movie, The Endless, was from that. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I didn't think I'd seen this movie before. I didn't think I had heard of this movie before until yesterday when I watched it for supposedly the first time. (laughs) Um, I didn't realize I had seen it until like 40 minutes in. There were a couple of scenes that were happening. I was like, wait, I'm having deja vu. Was this an episode of something? What? Okay, and then there were a couple other scenes, and I was like, I've totally seen this before. And then 54 minutes in, I confirmed on my list of movies that I watch. And sure enough, I watched this in the spring of 2020. Really? Yeah, so I completely, it's all, I also kept forgetting the name of the movie. Like, I'm like, what is it? The the Excelsior, The Expanse. I just, I cannot re- remember the name of it, but I'm trying to remember the name of it. Anyway, so I, I had apparently seen the movie. Um, I didn't really like it. I don't remember watching it the first time, but I looked up the rating 
that I gave on my own five-point scale, which I will do the math for later. Um, I might do some new math for my later score. But And I was like, huh. And then I continued watching the movie and was making notes. And I didn't – I literally did not remember – how the movie went at all. I didn't remember the end. I didn't remember the purpose. I remembered some of the the scenes. They rang a bell, but I did not remember any of the plot. So I, it was like watching it again for the first time yesterday. Wow. And I don't know how I watched it in the spring of 2020. Yeah, you don't remember. I was. It. I looked at my list. I mean, it was 2020. I watched a lot of freaking movies. Mm-hmm. I was not super into this movie. Um, I'm so shocked by this. My fr- I know. I feel <laughs> I'm like Allison's going to hate me. So th- I... I I took very minimal notes, but my first note is 10 minutes in, seems low budget, and I'm bored. (laughs) Um, So that was my first note, because it did have that low budget feel, but as you watch the movie as an entirety, it's well done. Like, it looks really good, and like the acting, you know, there's other things I can pick apart in it, but it doesn't look like a piece of trash. It looks really well done, and I, and part of what gave me a little, there was a bit of redemption involved in watching that little half hour making of and watching those two guys watch it. And I was like, wow, I feel really bad I didn't like their movie because they were just really <laughs> sweet talking about it, you know? Yeah. And it's like kind of like meeting the author or meeting the creator and you're like, oh, God, fine, I'll buy the book even though I hated it, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I guess if I had, no, nah, I don't know if I would, I don't think you have to watch Resolution first. No. Um, like, this is a complete standalone. Oh, so, so you have seen No, Resolution. no, oh, I have okay. not. Got it. And I don't, because I didn't even know that existed, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't, I think that this exists like, on its own as a movie, but, and I, I'm not going to go and watch Resolution, but I do like knowing that there's other pieces out there yeah. that kind of connect the two. It's interesting that it's about those two characters who were some of my least favorite yeah. characters. Oh, movie. really? Yeah. So it, it, it's <laughs> oh, like, I like the gun that tweaker. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Not as much as what Shitty Carl was that his name? Carl. Shitty Carl. <laughs> I loved him. You know who is um, in Resolution is uh, Zahn McLaren. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Dang. He's uh, he was one of the weird people in Doctor Sleep. He's also in Reservation oh, Dogs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Great actor. He played Crow yeah. Daddy. He played Crow yeah, Daddy. Crow Daddy. Okay. I don't yeah. remember cool. anyone's yeah. names. Cool. So I'm I'm excited to talk or looking forward to talking about this because I do want I know Allison's got pages of notes and she loves this movie. So I want to hear stuff. I want to hear information. I want to well, not fall yes. in love with this, but I want to like just like I want something to grab on to, so I'm looking forward to it. I was saying this to Lauren. I started taking notes, and I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to take obsessive notes because I I, I get what's going on in this movie. I remember the things I liked and that I don't. I want to hear about the intentions of things and and see if – because everything – every episode – when we when we talk about something, I end up walking away liking something a little yeah, bit more. Mm-hmm, same. So I know how I feel about the movie at this precise moment, but <laughs> I know that when you give me more context, I'm it'll probably help the scoring for me. So and even if it doesn't, that is fine because honestly, I'm used to you guys not liking my picks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd, I've liked all your picks. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I'm not changing what I pick in the future, so <laughs> sorry, guys. That's, that's the fun of it is to watch things you might not have watched or just to talk about something. Yep. That's I love. That's one of my favorite things that we get to do here. And there's no way that I would have watched this on my own. I, I wouldn't have come to this on my own. I just wouldn't. I, well, how you did know? Christopher and I both watch it? <laughs> I know it's so un- weird. <laughs> yeah. Unbeknownst to us, I'm like, oh, we both have seen this before, and we didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, it, that is surprising. I mean, I when I was doing a little bit of research stuff about this. I, the number of reviews that you find that are very glowing and very much like it's amazing that this movie was made for as little as it was and it gets so much right. It's like I don't know how I didn't see any of that press. Never heard of this. Never heard of these guys. Twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one, I am like obsessed with these directors. But one thing I really like about them is one, they care a lot about um, bonus footage on their Blu-rays, which I'm just always a huge fan of. And um, they're also active on Reddit and Twitter, and they'll, like, interact with fans of their work, which I just think is cool. So if this episode gets promoted, they might be listening to us. Yes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'll keep that in mind. (laughs) All right. Are we ready to dive into it? Okay. 
Uh, starts with two title cards, and then brothers Justin and Aaron receive a tape in the mail. It's from the UFO death cult they left 10 years ago. Through a series of scenes, we learn that Justin pulled Aaron out to save them from mass suicide, and their lives have been very difficult since then. They clean houses for a living, they have very little money, and they haven't been able to establish any meaningful relationships with friends or romantic interests. Justin values their freedom, but Aaron misses the family aspect of the cult. Aaron tells Justin he's going back for closure, and Justin begrudgingly agrees to one day and one night. So I think the, the title, not the title, the, the opening quotes, one of them is from Lovecraft. I think this is the crux of what I had trouble with in the movie. The Lovecraft quote is something about the scariest thing is not knowing what you're afraid of or something. Like right, that. right, right. Right. And we all know that from all the horror movies that we've watched. It's like, keep them guessing. It's mm -hmm. much scarier than whatever we could show on screen, right? And they do that in this movie. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that tactic works great unless you've seen so many movies that do that. Like I had just tried to watch that crap the tall, tall grass, whatever. In the tall grass, In the tall which Amanda grass. loves. I enjoy it, and oh, there's do. a, oh, there's a defunct bowling alley in it. Oh, yeah. right. The Joe Hill, we talked about this at some we point. We did yeah. talk about it's it. It's okay. Oh, right. I'm so glad you hated it, Christopher. <laughs> but I, I felt like here's another tall grass movie that mm -hmm. is not going to show me what is scary, and... By now, we all know this is a true fact of horror. Mm -hmm. Don't show them. Yeah. And I feel like by overtly telling us that right from the beginning and then also doing it, I felt a little let down. That was that was that is my general uh, issue. I think that's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs> I also wish that both these title cards were not there. What was I the agree. other? What was the other quote? The shorter one. It was something from an anonymous person. Friends right? tell each other how they feel with relative frequency. Siblings wait for a more convenient time, like their deathbeds. That shit yeah. is made up. Nobody ever said that. Yeah, who said that? The fucking writers. Yeah. <laughs> That's who said it. Well, they're setting up like, and those are the two main like yeah. things. The yeah. yeah, but don't tell us. That's I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, I think it's both like it's really like hitting you over the head with like mm -hmm. these are the themes and that's fine. Except I think the people who like this movie are people who are willing to sort of engage with it and think about it. And they don't mm -hmm. need a clue right at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I do enjoy about these title cards is um, the first one ends with fear of the unknown. And then the second one is like attributed to unknown. And they're both. Um, like yellow. They like highlight them. Yeah. <laughs> it just cracks me up. In case you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> P.S. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. All right. If you got this tape in the mail, would you go back to Camp Arcadia? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Um, well, in the, ver the setup of this movie at the outset is like a cult. And I, I know all the tropes and I know what to, and yeah, so like the idea of somebody going back to it, um, I mean, I, I yeah, why the hell would you go back to this place? Mm -hmm. And I know that it's all related to the wonder of what ha what is happening there, and it's very Lovecraftian, and they're trying, to, they're desperately trying to understand this thing that they can't understand and fathom. And yeah, I wasn't immediately taken with these two guys. It took a little, it takes a little bit, mm -hmm. and then eventually they become the best parts of this mm -hmm. because they're the most clearly invested and everybody else kind of feels like they're pulled from local theater <laughs> <laughs> the tape though um the tape is another trope that you see a lot this one was pretty good though mm -hmm. like yeah. the, it, the, it it would have had my interest it's not how you verify the format though just hold it up to the yeah. camera and see <laughs> you know, you put it in there. <laughs> well, i think i mean for me i struggle with the beginning because I, I wasn't attached to either of the characters immediately i didn't know like what they were doing, if this was like present day or am I already in some other universe thing? It just looked really like 
low budgety and the the sound seemed off to me i was just really the first 10 minutes were and which is weird because the rest of the movie is not like that to me at all but the very beginning i was just like i'm not hooking in i'm not hooking in um but to answer your question about why would you open that tape i think after having watched the entire movie you sort of see the younger brother's arc where he's frustrated with he got taken out of this thing 10 years ago he, he hates his life now he's they're cleaning he has no friends he's no purpose and so, and we understand more about his character at the end because he and his brother have that conversation about like, I don't like that life, I'm staying here. So that it kind of makes more sense. But at the beginning when that's first happening, I don't know, but I did like, I do like um, seeing cassette tapes and like old media as a oh, way yeah. to communicate things. <laughs> I think that's, I like that little horror trope. So did not mind that at all. Yeah. So we have to come back to this later on, but I was just reconsidering who sent the tape <laughs> in my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we'll have to talk about that Oh, later sure. On. We can talk about it now. Okay. I was okay. going to spoil it anyway. Okay. What are your so thoughts? So we know that Anna didn't send it because mm -hmm. she says she didn't. Right. So who else sends tapes to people? The spooky thing. Exactly. I mean, it's a little weird. The camera angle is a little off, but that doesn't matter. I So now that I'm thinking about it, that's cool. Yeah. And if you have seen Resolution, that's how Resolution starts, is Mike oh. gets a tape that is, quote unquote, from Chris, and it's showing him being like all crazy, like on drugs. Hmm. Um, and that's like his <laughs> impetus to go and, quote unquote, save his friend. To save him. Yeah. I want to see that now. They are very funny. A lot of, some of the humor doesn't quite translate because they filmed it in like 2010. Yeah. Um, mm. 2010. Wow. Really? I just want a whole video of Carl. Yelling. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> what just, are you in my house? <laughs> and just laughing and <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> um, this tape also ends with a shot from above, and if you've seen the movie before, you know that it's a previous ascension because there's like debris all over the place. It's everybody uh, right after they got torn apart or whatever. Right. How often is there an ascension? I know when the third moon is there. Every ten years. Every ten years. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like uh, when Aaron cuts off Justin's hair. I just find it funny. <laughs> and that um, was filmed in their producer David Lawson's apartment. Like <laughs> almost all of these beginning shots are just like at their house, at the park. They totally had a permit for. <laughs> I wondered about that. Yeah. <laughs> also like, man, why would you sit on that dirty ass ground? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that park looked like shit. <laughs> The family they see at the park when Justin looks over, that's the guy who made the music for this. Oh, okay. It's him and his family. He should have made more. He he is on all of their movies that they create. I mean, he should have put more in the movie. Oh, more music? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. thought about that because I know that you're not a fan of a scoreless movie. Especially if, and just to punch down for a second, if your sound is so bad. <laughs> I like, there were so many, like, to, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, Amanda. There were so many parts where there were these long stretches of very clearly important dialogue with a lot of exposition in them where Lauren and I were going, what the fuck did he just say? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and so we would rewind and be like, well, I still don't know. <laughs> I, guess, I guess they'll show us. You watched it on the wrong TV again, didn't you? I watched it on my good TV. Oh, okay. Oh. I know I know that I did it. I, I, I tried to See, do this movie a service. Did you get subtitles to work on it? Nope. You should have come over and watched it on our bad TV. It would have been... <laughs> you got so all the dialogue. Great. <laughs> I watched it during the day, which I didn't... I don't recommend that. Yeah, we did too. I, it, but that, that, that doesn't take me out too much. It was a beautiful I day. was out yesterday watching this. Let me tell you. Hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> I was not. You weren't into I it? I was not in the, the mood for it. I was mad that it took me almost, well, 40 minutes to realize, because this is over two hours. It is? No. It's just under two it's hours. Under two, just under it? two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, 151? Something, Something like, like that. that. Yeah. But it's 151. A podcast that I really like talks about how they will keep in mind the mood that they were in on the day that they watched the movie so it's like a good day good it matters movie, for bad sure day, good movie etc cetera, etc cetera. and like it can really skew things we watched this when i was in we were having a great day i was in a good mood so this movie got the best possible scenario that it could have the best mat my best tv the best <laughs> mat wow <laughs> so yeah Set and but you, setting. but but that sounds like that wasn't the case for you 
I think I just have a lot of things to do and I was just distracted. I was distracted. Hmm. And I do think it's a, I think it's a, such an interesting concept. I mean, it's not like completely original, but I like, they are really cool, like repeating motifs. And I do like the idea of the, like what is out there, like, you know, and I like the mirror universe or I'm, I know I'm calling these things all wrong. I don't know what they're all called, but I like the mirror and like the circular motif and the weird things that were happening. And I like the weird noise that made like, as you walked into like the other realm like you mm-hmm. walk through the little squiggles mm-hmm. yeah. yeah what the hell were those freaking like the little poles the clay little things was like showing was it was that what were those allison can what I were give, they what was it made first? out of what yeah, was yeah. it made out of are those essentially like showing where those boundaries are mm-hmm. okay did they make them and put them there yeah and there's a mud inspired by the concept of haunted geology from stephen king's desperation oh Wow. Hey, it all Gee, comes back. Now to I kind of like the movie a little more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a horror movie that was had some little inspiration of Stephen King. Interesting. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Stephen King and Lovecraft, you say. Mm-hmm. Hey, I tried. Really? <laughs> Aliens? I also tried this morning. I was sending her like they know Mike Flanagan. <laughs> oh, she totally did. <laughs> she totally did. I was like, oh yeah, I but that seems like it will be an interesting talk. They call them hoodoo in the script, and I think Shady Carl says they're that on once. they're on um, mm. the King Cast, the, another Stephen King podcast. Oh, I remember mm. him saying that, and I and but that's that's what they actually called them. I thought that was just some offhand line of his <laughs> hoodoo. Or, hoodoo. Mm-hmm. That that's what the clay things are called. Hmm. Are they made out of mud? They kind of look like a cob house or something. I don't know. I don't think they're naturally occurring. Right, they're from the. <laughs> They, those, those, pro- the, the spooky thing. Those They're three from ladies, the endless. The three ladies who did all of the set design and prop, they made them for like 94 cents a piece. Probably. <laughs> D- you watch the special features? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> they use like all the same people. They just made a movie last year called Something in the Dirt and like mm-hmm. Ariel's on it as yeah. the set designer and same composer, same it's producer. It's really cool. So part of like, and maybe this is too early to mention this, but after watching the movie again and not liking it again, having... <laughs> <laughs> having wa- having watched that like the half hour making of or a couple of the behind the scenes, you really did feel that the those two guys, Justin and Aaron, were so passionate and like so creative, like writing the script and trying your as a filmmaker or any sort of like creative job you want to have, that there are so many doors and so many barriers and so many like necessities and things and money and time and space. And they were just so passionate and creative and they kept going and kept going. And it's sort of you could just they were just really sweet and interesting, and I loved the fact that they worked with the same people. And this happens throughout movies with people who are making movies, whether you're a writer or producer. You work with your same DP. You work with your same sound because you mesh together. But here it's like a larger world that it's like, hey, guys, it's class project time. And then they would just work together on the project, and I just think that's so cool. And that made me just feel more, like, endeared to them or the movie. or the, It didn't make me, like like it i couldn't go back in time and like it more but it just put things in a different perspective to me and i just i almost felt bad i felt i'm like man i wish i liked it more because this is really cool it was so familial and nice and how they all work together i just really liked it i liked i just i i want i enjoyed it 100 percent agree with you yeah i like watch i didn't watch all of that but i watched a little bit of the half hour making of thing and i like them as people so mm-hmm. much and you're right there are endless hurdles to making movies especially endless <laughs> i did not actually mean to do that but, <laughs> but 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 it's true and thinking about like the the small crew that worked on halloween and mm-hmm. then each subsequent movie and how many people were reused it's like there there is a familial thing with small crews like that and like I want them to have this breakthrough thing I want them to like mm-hmm. oh shit they made their I don't know how many movies they made I was just gonna say it. their seventh movie okay so like, I want their sixth movie to be a thing where it just like busts them through and it's like oh then you can go back and look at these and see all the potential because it's all there mm-hmm. There, it, but there is there is something that I haven't been able to quite pinpoint that doesn't connect fully for me and I what I keep coming back to is I think it's, I have never seen somebody pull off a Lovecraft thing well. Mm. 
mm-hmm. it's like I feel like trying to make a Lovecraft thing is missing the point altogether. Hmm. The idea of a Lovecraft creature, like a Cthulhu or something, or in this case, whatever they, whatever this thing would be called, is you can't describe it and you can't show it because it's it, it's beyond description. It's it's something that terrifies you t- to the point of insanity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So trying to show that, I just I've never seen it done mm-hmm. right. One thing. It made me think of was Jean Jacket, the monster in Nope. Mm. They show it. Oh, right. And you know what? That is a, that's a pretty Lovecrafty thing. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's done that, pretty cool. Yeah, that works. But no offense to these filmmakers, mm-hmm. Jordan Peele, they're not. Yeah. And Jordan Peele's this, budget, they don't have. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, exactly. You know. And for <laughs> having the budget they had, like I said, it looks really good. I mean, there are definitely some imperfections, but it looks so good. Yeah. And yeah, th- yeah, I like how it was done. Elson's just beaming over yeah. here and staring I've, at us like we're a bunch of crazy folks. Well, and I, <laughs> and I She's like, wait a minute, you guys. I can't wait a minute. With me. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do think this comes. For me, this comes pretty close to a good Cthulhu movie, a good Lovecraft movie. And I think the low budget even helps in this Mm -hmm. case because I was thinking, you know, I might like the movie a little bit more if it was a little little bit slicker, a little bit more cleaned, cleaned up, a little bit more obvious in some ways. But I think it would also lose its weird edge. You know, if the colors were a little less muted all the time, everything looks like it's covered in dust. Mm -hmm. But it literally was. (laughs) (laughs) I might like it less Mm -hmm. also if it was kind of cleaned up with more money. And I think that that low budget kind of adds to the weird Mm -hmm. telling. It's it's overly long. It has possibly too many disparate elements for a horror movie for me, although fewer and fewer the more I think about it. But so I think it, it starts to get on to the idea of a Lovecraft story in that way. You know, God, if you read those Lovecraft stories, they're <laughs> they're not always great storytelling either. No. <laughs> you know? His writing's almost impossible to read, I think. But Right. Yeah. Um, and the other quick thing I wanted to and mention... He's a bad dude, by the way. <laughs> 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 Is the, the art for this movie looks so much like the Fantasy Flight Games logo for Arkham Horror. Oh. So I I love that connection that probably only I think of when I when I look at the cover. That oh. that ring and they're kind of like jumping through another dimension anyway. So I think that's a really mm-hmm. cool thing. Well, I think also one thing that can make this stand out from some of those other examples is you've got these two brothers that are like the heart of the movie and they have a journey and they have a relationship and things that they're trying to work on individually and together in the middle of, you know, all of this stuff that's going on in the alien death cult. (laughs) And that brother stuff all really works for Mm -hmm. me, especially when they actually get to the camp, Mm -hmm. whatever you call it. Like that's their relationship is the most realistic and most effective one. And it, Mm -hmm. it, it, it works. Really it did, well they did for a really me. like that bunk bed scene. It's that's really exactly not, the yeah. one I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah, that's just like you know. Plus, yeah. Well, if you add that to the cutting hair scene, <laughs> you know, it's like these spontaneous, really funny, true to life moments that creep in that they left in the movie. I think that really adds a lot. Yeah. It makes it feel so much more realistic to me mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. Well, and the older one seems to know something terrible that happened, and the younger one doesn't quite know why they had to leave in a hurry. And he's remembering, oh, I remember the goats, or oh, I remember going fishing, or he remembers these small things, but not the larger thing. Mm-hmm. Well, the second scene. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours later. <laughs> hey, Allison, you should be delighted because I am delighted. <laughs> we've had so much to talk about with this already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just wait, you guys. And we haven't even, they, they've barely fucking done anything yet. They, they just show how the shitty camp. their lives are. <laughs> We're on Allison's first half, the first quarter page of her notes, literally. <laughs> The first quarter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. You guys be quiet. Here that we rules. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Day one. Justin and Aaron drive back to the cult, stopping along the way at their mother's roadside memorial. 
Inside, we meet the residents of Camp Arcadia. That night, around the campfire, Hal asks to show Justin something back at his cabin. Meanwhile, Aaron chats with Anna. Justin returns to the campfire, and Shane shows him a magic trick involving a ball being thrown into the air. That was a cool trick. <laughs> I was I was mystified. Do you remember him? The guy? Mm-hmm. No. Shane is the magician at Abra's birthday party in Dr. Sleep. Uh, is he a magician oh. in real life? Yes, he is. Oh, my God. So he's not to be trusted. Wow. <laughs> Another That's funny. Stephen King tie-in. Yeah. Wow. The first ten night. out of ten. That just bumped up a full, <laughs> I'd say full number. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> the One of the first um, really? jobs that That's Aaron funny. had in Hollywood was he was the colorist for Mike Flanagan's first movie, Absentia. Mm-hmm. Which is really good, mm-hmm. it um, is. but so they vaguely know each other and did like a Q and A last year for um, Aaron and Justin's newest movie. But That's it's cool. funny because they have like shared um, actors. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting because like Wake Flanning is another person who has all the same people all the time. Mm-hmm. You know that family. Remind me of the cult leader guy's name again. Hal. 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 Uh, Hal. They have no leader. <laughs> well, right. I know. I, know, I, know. I never but, knew his name was. But Hal. I, cannot, I can't remember that. His, I can't remember his name. Like but Hal, Hal the robot. When they first meet him, um, he's an, he's another one. He's another one that really works for me. <laughs> he has big like youth pastor energy. <laughs> yeah. Like the youth pastor that has a guitar. It's like, come on, kids. And drinks um, hefeweizen. Right. <laughs> they drink so much beer. They drink a lot of that beer, um, it, which made me wonder if there was some, like that was how they got some of their financing, if there was like a local brewery or something that they got money from. or if No, there's... in the mythology of the camp, that's how they make money. Right. Is through the beer. Right. Um, you can spot Arcadia Brewing um, Easter eggs in other movies of theirs. Oh. That's cool. You can buy the shirt online, too. Yeah. Hmm. I really wanted to drink a half of bison. <laughs> I don't. I don't know the difference between bears. So I was like, that it's, looks light. <laughs> it, it it did look light. Anyway, it didn't look like a half of bison to me, but um, they're good. Uh, Tim's been putting his uh, thousand hours or whatever into that. It's million, million hours. Million hours. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I love the. I love Aaron rocking out in the car. <laughs> it's some real brother shit right there. Brother shit and like <laughs> and like. Easy to relate to the older brother because it was annoying. Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you get some of that brother sense too when the younger brother wants to drive and the other one's like, I'm driving, get in. Yep. And you don't question, like I was thinking that too as an older sister with a younger sister, like you don't question. You're like, okay, yep, these are the rules of the family. You just you do it. Right. You know? I was, I, I wanted more information about the mom and the gravesite. I had to like, of course I got distracted. I had to like rewind and see what they had said and what was going on. But like he was like doing like a little prayer for the mother. I'm going to take care of him and it'll be okay. I wanted to know what happened to the mom. Right. Uh, so they they were in a car crash right mm-hmm. there. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You find out later, and I assume that she died in a car wreck there. Yeah. But that was how they ended up at the place. And this is when we first see the the birds, right? Mm-hmm. The, the birds up in the sky. The two circles. I love yeah. that. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And the picture they drew is like untouched oh I he got the pink even... he got the pinks just right or something wow right. they really held up <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i see slow oh Wait. well and, but we we can't possibly know at that point mm-hmm. any of that so in real life justin's mom completed suicide three days before they started filming this so that scene just like kills me every time Yikes. just knowing that they're yeah um, in some of the special features, they talk about how, like, a lot of people don't think that it's their strongest performances as actors, but, like, you can, if you're familiar with their other work and you've seen them in other stuff, you can tell that it's, like, off a little bit. Like, it's, yeah, it's like a layer of grief well, over it. Real grief and real trauma doesn't look like it does in movies no. mm-hmm. at all. So I would, I would certainly... Even though I know that now, I, that's not a criticism I would have made in this particular mm-hmm. scene. Because I don't know that 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 all worked for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, but of course I was just I want to know what the fuck the birds were doing. <laughs> <laughs> More than anything. But yeah, wow, yeah. that's that's rough. Isn't that fucked up? Um, Justin and Aaron talk about it as like it was actually like a really great bonding 
time for the cat, like particularly Justin and Aaron, who are close, but also Justin's dad was craft services for the movie. Oh my God. He's like making so- grilled cheese in his trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Boys dinner. <laughs> At least he didn't have to mortgage his house for this movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> See, it's literally a family who's putting together this like creative work. Yeah. But they spent like a month together on this. They like lived at the camp. <laughs> um, they, were yeah. in a, they were in a, they formed a cult. They formed a small cult. No right. big deal. The grilled cheese cult. I think actually this, that scene is the first time I noticed a, a, a big technical quibble I have with this movie. Yeah. And I noticed in the um, making of why it was happening, uh, somebody get them a fucking tripod. Oh. Because the <laughs> scenes where no, where people are just sitting and they're and the it is literally shaking from somebody breathing were started to get distracting. Oh yeah, it's one thing if it's like this is supposed to be you are in this scene with them and this scary thing that's happening, but if it's just two people talking about something that's sad, if it's two people sitting by a shitty lake at a park. Well, tripods cost money, and it also takes time to but put a camera, camera properly they shot on a tripod. It on was so, it's not a cheap camera. So okay, anyway. They bought a camera instead of the tripod and the time to set up the tripod. Well, and let, hopefully they learned their lesson. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just that that there were times where it was shaking so much that it was really like it bothered me, um, mm-hmm. and it was just it took me out of the movie a little bit. There's a couple little. Piece. I watched the commentary, of course, mm. and there's a couple things like that where they're like, mm, this could have, like, there's one scene where Aaron's out of focus because there was something wrong with the lens or something that mm. day. Yeah. Hmm. These things happen, though. Yeah. Tight budgets, but still, buy a, buy a tripod. I also like seeing everybody, um, like, eating dinner and, like, meeting all the people and, like, trying to figure out, like, how do they relate to each other? Like, how do they know each other? What do they think of each other? When they get to the Yeah, the when camp. they get there. Well, I was also like, wow, everybody is, they all kind of look the same. They're all the same age. There's no kids running around. What kind of, what are they doing here? Mm-hmm. Just drinking beer? <laughs> Letting this guy make beer and then drinking it? Yeah. So I was curious <laughs> about the relationships between some of the people. Yeah, they seem to do a lot of just hanging around. Yeah, they're just really happy, <laughs> very elaborate meals. Like, maybe I want to live there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they had really great meals. Yeah. Um, one little thing that doesn't matter at all, but I've just found charming is um, earlier when they're cleaning the apartment, uh, Justin says something about like, I'd rather be free and eat ramen than be like, trapped any corn like that's like the super extravagant option he pauses a little bit for that too yeah <laughs> for the fresh vegetables for, like corn yeah yeah <laughs> well then at the dinner there's like a huge bowl of green beans and aaron takes such a big like heaping spoon that he has to use his hand on top so that mm-hmm. they don't spill i just think like there's so many little moments like that where i'm like that makes it feel a little bit more like real mm-hmm I just want to talk about the magic trick before we move on. The baseball. I love this moment because it, for me, when I first watched this, this was the first like, oh shit moment where you're like, something is wrong here. It's not just like these weird cult people who, who knows what their deal is. Like something, something's up. Was that before they played that the game with the rope? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're going there next. Yeah. This is the, that was the first indication of the, the, that there's something weird about this camp. There's something up. Mm-hmm. Um, but you well, shouldn't trust a magician. Period. <laughs> they are literally there to fool you. Because it made me wonder. Because before we even get to the camp, when they're on the road, we mentioned those the birds were for, were sh- f- flying in that circular pattern. There were two of them, so it made me think of like magnetic fields and force fields, and there was something like g- gravitationally pulling or something. So mm. that briefly was in my mind, and then when we saw the baseball like get stuck in the air or whatever. It made me think of like the earlier, like whatever for. I still don't know what was going on. Still don't, but like whatever force field thing was out there. Right. And then once we get to the rope scene, I'm like, okay, yes, there is a thing. Well, isn't that we're also shown there's that lady that's just drawing, the <laughs> just she's just drawing the shit that's up in the sky, right? Is, <laughs> yes. This is where we're shown that. Yeah. Um. So that you know. Yeah, we're kind of given these little like. Uh, one sheet versions of what everybody's thing is mm-hmm. at this point. 
Who was it that was doing the drawing? Is it the? It's Lizzie, who I love every line that she has. She's the one with the with she, the wacky haircut. Yeah. She was like at a mental. She's like I was in a mental institution. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then I, I, I escaped, and then I came here, and this is wonderful. I did. I did. She has a really great line later, like about how that. Oh, we were we didn't date. He was just some guy I hung out with when I was like on LSD that and, I, and this that and this I and this. Obsessed over. Or yeah, yeah. Like that. Was just this guy I was obsessed with when I was on lithium, thorazine, and PCP. <laughs> yes. And then just stops and stares at Justin as if that's like yeah. something you say to yeah. your girl. That was a good line. It's like a. It's like the goth kid on your bus in high school. <laughs> like it, it felt like it felt the her lines felt AI generated to me. <laughs> but, I liked it though because she was also that glimpse like with the drawings yeah. that she was doing. Well and she kind of she lends she <clears throat> keeps you a little bit on the track of well this must be a cult because they're picking weak people mm-hmm. like and weak minded people and whatever and and meeting tangible needs. Yes. Right. So. Yeah. Well they were a safe haven for her. Right. She's in Resolution, although it's a different actress. She just shows up outside of um, uh, Chris and Mike's cabin. The like, same character? Yep. Mm. Middle of the night, she's just outside the window, like, st- looking at them. Wandering off. <laughs> Do you have yeah. any drugs in there? <laughs> yeah. I love her line when they first meet her. It's so nice to finally meet you two. Everyone says all kinds of stuff about you. <laughs> right. Not like, good things. <laughs> just all kinds of things. <laughs> I was wondering in this scene before you figure out what the hell's going on, why they're not upset that they're there, mm-hmm. because we're led to believe through um, those little snippets of news footage that they were in, that they were saying that they're all fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. So why would they be like, yeah, come on back and eat some green beans with us? Youth pastor, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. I also think they were like pretty young. Like, I think they were children when they first came. I think they were pretty young when they left. And how, yeah, so how much, do you know how much time is supposed to have passed? Because we were trying to figure that out based on the the different wigs. (laughs) It's not not 10 years. It was 10? Yeah, it's been, so they left right before the last ascension. Okay. That's when Justin was like, there's something weird here, we got to leave. And then they come back 10 years later for the next, like right before the next ascension. Got it. Because they say... 10 years, but I still wasn't sure how old that the boys were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, were they 10 and 15 when they left? And now they're 20 and 25? I mean, right. Because for someone to not have remembered things, I didn't know if it was the something that happened in the place that the younger brother like blocked out. Because I mean, they seem like they're in their 20s. Right. You know, well, at first they are putting so much emphasis on that fucking beer that you're you're thinking like, oh, they've been like poisoned or brainwashed or something through that because mm-hmm. cults and whatever. Um, Plus you just want some. <laughs> I wanted some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but do, so ten do you know how old they're supposed to be? Just like in their 20s? Like why doesn't Aaron remember anything? Like my impression is that they were like young kids when the car crash happened because Hal mentions pulling them out and the picture that they leave for their mom at the memorial looks like mm-hmm. little kids. And so I wonder if they got there right at the like right after an ascension happened and then they lived there for 10 years. And then before the next ascension was going to happen, that's when they were like, we got to get the fuck out. So if they're like seven and nine, and then they leave when they're 17, 19. Then they come back that when tracks. they're 27, 29. Like those are just numbers oh, so I'm making up. Like but that's years. like the vibe I get. OK, mm. 20 years makes more sense. Plus, they would have gone through the tragedy of, like, witnessing their mother's death and, like, being rescued. And living with a bunch of random strangers who just happen to find you. Right. Well, too, if you're little kids, I mean, if Hal is the same, exactly the same guy at that time, you know, he's just, like, this young man. He's being really sweet and nice and, you know, playing guitar and feeding him corn and stuff. They're going (laughs) to, they're going to, you know what I mean? Like, they're, as a rescuer, they're going to bond with that Mm -hmm. and feel safe. My question is, I wonder, I think I have a good sense of how long Tim's been there, but everybody else, it's like, how many ascensions have you been here for? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, the, like especially the old beer maker guy. Tim. He's been there for a while. Yeah. I think he's one of the first guys. You can tell, so. and you can kind of see by what he's wearing also. At some point, the one of the brothers says that they're all in their 40s and they just look young mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. And right. I'm still trying to put together because I'm like, still, I'm like, they don't have kids. I'm like, and at this point, I thought they were all castrated still. <laughs> right. And I was like, but I don't understand. 
Didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it, though. <laughs> I've spent quite a bit of time thinking about <laughs> That's it. That's the point. <laughs> Night one, the camp gathers for the struggle. Members of the cult take turns pulling a rope that extends up into the black night sky. Aaron tries twice and is successful, while Justin is thrown on the ground and rope burned when he's pressured into trying it. Justin and Aaron return to the cabin and talk about their day. Aaron asks to stay for another day to hang out and shoot guns together, and Justin agrees. The struggle. The struggle. So this was cool. I've never (laughs) seen this in another movie. This was so weird. Unfortunately, it just, it lacked a little bit of punch and effect. Mm. It should have been scarier than it was, in my opinion. Like, where's that fucking rope going? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm with you. Like, it's awesome. It's new. It's scary. But I feel like they just slightly missed an opportunity to punch home. There is something really, really weird going on here. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was the lack of music. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was. I'm I'm not quite sure. So the the scene where the camera pans over and there's a car. No. Dave. Smiling Dave. Smiling, smiling. Oh, my God. (laughs) Who is their producer? (laughs) So. You know, there's the hunch that Smiling Dave's up on a ladder and he's just got the rope. You know, we already know that's probably not true. Mm-hmm. Right. But then it's as if the the movie is trying to tell us, oh, no, it's really not true because there's Smiling Dave. It feels anticlimactic to me. Yeah. And I can't pinpoint what you could do to make it. I think maybe music, maybe a specific sound, maybe some sound design thing but there there is something it's a it's a neat idea a rope that's just kind of coming from up in the sky but there's there is something about the way that it looks that doesn't land for me i Mm -hmm. yeah i can't i can't place i wanted it to be a little bit creepier yeah yeah we needed a sound Mm -hmm. if you think about like jaws that Dunna, dunna. Mm-hmm. Or like in Nope, you hear that little, that little creakily, creepy little sound. Like the vents opening an alien and like the hissing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. There, there's just something missing from that. I like that scene. I think because you, for me, it's solidified what we've seen some with the baseball. I'm like, okay, something is up, like mm-hmm. literally up. Um, I didn't really think about how like ineffective it was, but in hearing you two, I think if it had a sound, it would have, because I wasn't really afraid of it. I was just like, oh, here's the thing I'm supposed to figure out. They're going to tell me something now. Okay. Right. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want it to be creepy, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. It is creepy to me, but only when Aaron puts the rope around his waist. That part freaks me mm-hmm. out, because, like, so much of his arc at the time is, like, remembering fishing at the camp, and, like, he uses a fishing knot to tie it around his waist the second time. But, like, the thing that kills me is he's the fish. Like, he's at the end of the rope. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That freaks me out every time. But I do, I I don't think that the scene as a whole is, like, creepy necessarily. Mm -hmm. I did wonder when he put it around his waist and was facing it, was trying to run. I was like, oh, man, it should just slice him in half. That'd be cool. Like, I know that's not going to happen because he's, like, one of the main characters. <laughs> or, like, pull him up but in I was the like, sky. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, yeah. I'm like, oh, here right. we go. I'm like, no. For or not. just pull him, like, a little bit too far and a little mm-hmm. bit too hard to make it be like, oh, shit, this thing's really just to powerful. Just freak him out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than, like, he won because he used a fish knot. Clap, clap, clap. It's almost like, or, like, you needed somebody in that scene who had never seen that before who could react like the audience was and give you a little mm-hmm. bit more to th- it's because said you have all these smiling at this point you still think they're cult people yeah or like well this is just a thing we do and n- nobody fucking does that you know <laughs> so I, I guess they didn't do that when they were there before they wouldn't I, have witnessed that mm-hmm. it seems like they i think they did i, I think there's some line about like um, like I think they basically weren't allowed to take full part in everything because they were kids. Mm. How come? I guess or did the kids grow up? Like how there's still nobody like the young or I don't think there's any there. kids trapped in the loop. So those were kids that were brought from outside into the loop, and they would have stayed kids forever. But then they left and they got to age because they, they didn't age get died, and then they would go back and anyway. 
I like the struggle because it has the same vibe as the magic trick earlier mm -hmm. where like you're almost lulled into like a sense of like false security where you're like, ugh, yeah, of course this cult guy is going to do a magic trick, whatever. But right at the end, there's like a little twist where you're like, well, wait a second. How did, what was that? How did that happen? Um, yeah. yeah. I love the struggle. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. <laughs> this is also one of the places where the dialogue, like, I, I feel like they make so many little, like, uh, I don't think they can say outright what's happening, but there's so many little pieces of dialogue where they're like, we're always here. We never give up. Mm -hmm. Struggle with growth, the struggle with a higher power as the rope goes into the sky. Just cool. Yeah. Huh. Sorry. <laughs> a higher power. Defaw. <laughs> day two. The next day they take a gun out, but Justin can't hit the target. They find the bullet flattened by something. Uh, later, Justin finds shitty Carl trying to walk out of the camp again. Justin loses him, but immediately experiences supernatural phenomena outside in the woods. There's that missing shoe and all that dust. Mm -hmm. Well, shitty Carl has a line later that says it'll snatch you up right out of your shoes, and this is the first time that we see a close-up on a shoe. Mm -hmm. mm. I really like shitty Carl's character because... He just lives in the outskirts, and he's just trying to do his thing and ride his bike. And he's Don't just touch all my mad. fucking bike. Don't touch my fucking bike. He's so on edge. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> he seems more tweakery than the guy, the tweaker guy. Yeah, he was my favorite character mm -hmm. in the movie, and he <laughs> actually seems the very realistic to me because his speech is so distorted, not audio. But it just jumps from one thought to the other, and his mood changes mm -hmm. so fast. He just reminds me of people I knew growing up that were so frightening, you know, almost like an alcoholic father, which I did not have, but people who just like, you know, s do these insane mood swings yeah. just mm -hmm. so fast. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the character of Shitty Carl. I wonder if they lifted that from Trailer Park Boys with Shitty Bill. Oh. It was a it was a recurring character on that. I don't know anything would, about that. It would it would track with the timing. It's a it's a very silly Canadian show, um, <laughs> extremely silly. But yeah, there's a character on there named Shitty Bill. So nice, yeah. a whole shitty person universe. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> made up of two characters at this point. <laughs> <laughs> they all live in Shit's Creek. <laughs> Um, I love how Justin's like, why can't I hit the target? Or like, seriously, what do you think hit it? And Aaron's just like, I don't know, you suck. So this was a scene that I was a little lost in. I just couldn't visually see what I was supposed to get out of it. They pick up the bullet. The bullet has been flattened. Mm -hmm. But did the bullet, it just bounced back at them? Or I missed this too. I I, I think I was just not... I was just not following a little bit. I think it's hitting one of the borders of one of the um, right. loops. And they just, there isn't like an obvious, as far as I could see, there isn't like an obvious visual representation of that happening other than when they say, whoa, and then they pick up the bullet and just kind of, mm -hmm. and I realized that they probably couldn't really like do some trick mm -hmm. to to show that happening other than just showing you that bullet. But as a result, yeah, I was a little bit confused as to why that mattered in that precise mm -hmm. moment. I knew, um, it, knew it had to matter, though, because later on when they're in the boat, he's, what do you think flattened that bullet? Right. But at the time, it just seemed like it, to me, I was thinking force fields. Like, I imagine, like, a layer of, like, metal under the dirt. So instead of, like, penetrating and staying, like, it went through, hit the force field, and, like, it was mm. still on the surface of the dirt, and that's why it was a pancake. Oh, see, I even missed that. Like, when... So, like a bullet turns into like a pancake, yeah, 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 like yep, that. I don't uh -huh, know. Yep. You know, <laughs> you know, like that one episode of The Wire when there was a yes. bullet in the fridge door. Exactly. That's what I'm. This is where my brain thinks <laughs> when I'm watching movies. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that was a really oh, good scene. Yeah, when they said the F word like a hundred times. <laughs> right. Classic. <laughs> Anyways, even if you don't know what it means, it's still I'm like, okay, something's up with the, why they happened to the bullet. So, yeah. f and the fact that one of them was thinking about it was like, hmm. And I definitely did not have. I don't know what my guess would have been. I wasn't thinking force fields. I don't think. I don't think I had any grasp on what the thing was at this point. I don't know about you, but 
if you had any idea. No, no. no. Okay. I don't, because I wasn't thinking aliens. I was picturing where they were kind of inside of a bubble. So when the ball got thrown out of that, the force field, the zone, the zone we'll call the zone. When the ball, baseball got, was on the other side of the zone and then it came back or the, 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 per, the thing that was holding the rope that came in, it was on the other side. And so when they shot the bullet, it hit the bottom of the, this is my fake way of how I was trying to put things together. It hit the bottom of the field. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid. That's like part of the fun though, is like, well, I have these three clues. W- what is it? Yep. Yeah. And you see those like sci-fi tropes where it's literally like the dome or something. Like it's literally a little bubble. Well, the zone. bubble is that was another a movie. Steven? Yeah. Under the dome. Um, yeah, under the dome. It's like the <laughs> dome. It reminded me of that because that's literally you can see the thing, the like, you know, the squiggly marks and you put your arm yeah. through. Yeah. <laughs> or the Simpsons movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Another classic. <laughs> hey, it is. I think the Simpsons movie is great. Spider Pig. I'll go on record. Exactly. There's so much great stuff in that. I think that might be the last good Simpsons thing that happened. Night two. Justin and Aaron attend karaoke night. Justin asks Hal about the entity, and Hal tells him to just go looking for the answer himself. Hal shows Justin that there are two moons in the sky and says two moons brings the truth. Three moons signifies the ascension. Aaron and Anna smoke red flower, and she shows him the atmospheric mirroring effect at the edge of their loop. Justin comes across a distraught woman who's not part of the camp. She's just been looking for her missing husband. This was the point in the movie where I realized I had seen this movie before. <laughs> <laughs> was the when they were looking at the, the double moon after they had smoked the, the red flower and then seeing that woman, the blonde woman sitting on the steps. Maybe you're in a loop, Amanda. Ooh, I probably am. <laughs> a three-year loop. Right. <laughs> yeah. Have we seen the tent at this point? We've seen it, but Aaron hasn't gone to see what's in it yet. Oh, it's the clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's creepy. Yes. Def- definitely, the, eventually, the creepiest thing in the movie. For yeah? Sure. For sure. Oh, for sure. I, I think, think so, too. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, and the the one of the illustrations of the sky I thought was really creepy. The one with the two eyes in it. Oh yeah, that one was creepy. Yeah, I like the drawings. Show me that shit for real. <laughs> I like. Um, this is like way ahead, but when Lizzie gives uh, Justin a going away present, and he's just like, "That's honest." Uh, <laughs> That is so fucking I, I, funny. I love right. that line too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's like a giant creature looking down on a tiny little man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Hal says something interesting here about how Justin, like, doesn't Justin want that weight off his shoulders, like, knowing that there's a higher power and control? I guess it was like a big part of Act Two where Justin was supposed to start to want to stay at camp and, like, like think that maybe it'd be all right and like maybe he wouldn't have to be like in control of his brother 24 7 or whatever he says but um ultimately they cut it because it kind of killed the pacing and killed Mm. the stakes so everyone at the camp has been through at least one ascension except lizzie right so they do know something and I feel like it's a little disingenuous that they're playing off like, I don't know, uh, <laughs> go, you know, find your own path in life, you know. And they're also, you know, the youth pastor is kind of, he, he knows. <laughs> I mean, he knows that if they stay, they're going to be trapped there forever. Mm-hmm. So he's yeah. totally got this devious side. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But maybe he also thinks it's a safer, better place to be because you can eat very good, you can drink very good, you stay young, you stay attractive, and even though you die this hor- theoretically horrible death every ten years, you still get to live like in this little like like oasis or what do you what do you want to call it? Utopia. Yeah. Utopia. That's what right. I. That's the word I wanted. Utopia. You know, it's sort of like heaven-like. Like oh, this is the perfect paradise, even though it's based in 
science fiction and horror my, books, but they're still a freaking cult. Yeah, <laughs> my par- my paradise does not have bunk beds, <laughs> uh, especially when they're uh, so uh, far uh, apart. Uh, there was yeah. so much space between them. I was really <laughs> distracted by that. That's a camp. It's That's like a- so an adult can stand on their lower bunk and not yes. impede <laughs> further <laughs> above them. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise it'll be a triple bunk. Yeah. But well, I mean, that's, it's a camp place. I did true. like how the one woman was leaving all the sticky notes, and I like finding out later like what those sticky notes were, what the meaning of that was, mm-hmm. when you meet Mike and figure out who she is. Her name is Jennifer, and um, like this isn't really a spoiler because it's the first two minutes of the movie, but resolution starts with Mike getting the tape, Mike saying goodbye to his wife Jennifer, who's pregnant at the time, and then him driving out to the camp. Mm. Mm. That's cool. I mean, but if you're a cult, if, like, if you're a cult, isn't the idea to get more people to come and stay and be with you? Yeah, I was thinking. So about isn't this. he doing his job as the fake leader? Because I think Hal also has his own little arc where he clearly wants them to stay from the beginning. Mm. And there's all these weird little lines where, like, he talks about Justin's photography, and he's like, "Yeah, he was great," or "He could have been given time." It's like Mm -hmm. all these little moments where you're like, yeah, this guy wants him to stay. Mm -hmm. And I thought a lot about it. Like, why would he want him to stay? Because they're all like basically in fucking purgatory. (laughs) Purgatory or utopia. I I think if you've been stuck for a couple loops, like novelty is gone. And these are two people who can potentially add infinite new conversations and infinite new experiences mm-hmm. right. to these people who have like probably done everything that they oh, can possibly think of. Oh, and they all have a skill. Of. They all bring something. They mm-hmm. had new skills. Yeah. I like that because I feel like if I was trapped, I'd just be killing myself every day. Yeah. Just like, uh, sorry, I don't find any value in any of this. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like any of this. No. Yeah. Right. But doesn't Hal also, did they, did Hal, they knew that when they got out that the older brother, Justin, went and told them that they were all, he told them stories about the cult and they were all castrated and like Mm -hmm. Hal was like super pissed. He's like, you told them that? So they, how did they get, how did they know what happened on the outside? Um, I think the beer distributors come in from out. I don't think they're part of the The distributors just bust through a hole. In the endless, and like, yeah, that's, beep, beep, that's beep, right. beep, how important the beep. beer is. Like the truck is picking up the beer. Something happened to the truck. Oh well. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, right. Literally. Yeah. Also, this whole beer distribution thing—I missed all of this. I was wondering why they, they were, why they all had this homemade beer, and I just thought it was the older guy Tim. I thought he was just like the the beer master. I'm like, oh, that's it's his just, his talent. Yeah. I didn't like know they were they... like distributing. Right. Well, I mean, they show you that part when he goes for a run where he runs into those just <laughs> distributors and one of them is wearing like the macho man. Oh, I guess there is. I guess there is a truck there. Yeah. And I think that's that's like as much as they show you and they kind but of why do they need it. money? Well, because they still need food and clothing. You, you and... make a garden. What's her face? Anna is sewing. Yeah. But how much fabric can she make using the resources in the middle of the desert of California? They're wearing the same clothes True. forever. Forever. There's a really funny part of the movie. I think there are some dumb r- rules. Smiling Dave talks about his fanny pack for a long time. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Our first sighting of like when they get to like, you know, it says Camp when Acadia the and they're smiling Dave with it. I'm, I wrote it down. I'm like blue fanny pack smiling. Love it. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. You can buy that on their yeah. website. Oh my <laughs> Your God. Own blue fanny pack. That's so cute. So I think this is the point when Tim says something like, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think he is kind of a counterweight against Hal. Mm-hmm. Well, because you get the sense he's been there for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, like, he throws the beer out. So even though he's, like, quote, unquote, perfected the beer, that doesn't, it hasn't brought him happiness. He's still stuck. Right. And he's been there the longest. He's also the one with that little shed with the lock on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we've seen him outside that yet. But eventually he's the one who, like, unlocks the shed. Mm-hmm. Right. I also kind of like the line at the campfire where you overhear the half conversation. This is what Tolkien said. This is what Lewis said. Mm-hmm. This is what Lovecraft something something. Lovecraft perverted it. Lovecraft perverted <laughs> it, right. So I kind of wanted to know the exact thing they were talking about. But, you know, in real life, you don't always know. You're just you're passing mm-hmm. through 
a conversation yeah. anyway. <laughs> what Shane says later, though, just like devolves into like, I guess I'm lucky to even live at all. You're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so is this one we're getting the sense that Anna and Aaron, is Aaron picking up on the fact that he likes Aaron or he doesn't, or Anna, he doesn't know what that feels like. He said, mm-hmm. that was just puppy love. I don't know anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but is this, has that happened yet? Yeah. Okay. I, um, there's so many little funny lines. I love when they first meet and Anna's like, I used to make your clothes. Do you remember? And he's like, uh, whatever, whatever. She says like, you know, I make a lot of stuff, but I also go to like thrift stores. And he goes, that's where I got this <laughs> and points to his totally average brown hoodie. Yeah. There's like right. nothing special about it at all. But he's like, yeah, me too. Right. This is where I got that. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does seem like, like a little kid. He yes. has, he's very, he's new to the world he's figuring out he's naive yeah he doesn't he he, he doesn't seem dumb or like young he just seems yeah naive just Mm -hmm. not quite sure what's going on he seems like someone that was rescued Mm -hmm. from a cult even (laughs) though at this point they're kind of starting to dispense with the like this is a cult Mm -hmm. kind of isn't it's like you even there's a there's a point where it's like oh this isn't a cult at all Mm -hmm. when the guy says when the youth pastor guy it's just like, I'm not the leader. I don't know what it is either. You go figure it out. Yeah. It's like, oh, all, so all these people were brought here at some point. Well. <laughs> How do they all get this, there? I. Or just got stuck. They get stuck. Oh, are the beer distributors stuck then? Is that why they looked like shit? No. I, How do they I, get to come in and out? The, so anybody can come in and that's out. true. Except for if you are if you die there or if you're oh. trapped during the ascension. Right, right, right. I like forgot. when the loop resets, that that's how you get stuck. I looked up this. I did not pick up oh. on this rule when I was watching it. You have I to get up before I the ascension. I saw it later, mm-hmm. and it made parts of it make more sense to me. This is a spoiler, so let's cut it maybe, but... I think we've spoiled plenty at this point. <laughs> like, resolution, you don't even know that the entity is part of it until, like, midway mm. towards the end. Like, that's not even, like... Because they don't know. They're just mm. at this cabin, and they're doing their thing, and they're noticing weird things, but, like... I think that's how a lot of people get stuck is like, sweet, we found a camp. Let's hang out here for uh, like however long. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know the rules and if you don't know, like if someone else isn't cluing you into what's going on, you have no idea. Man. Okay. So we have all these people that are stuck in different loops, right? You have the first guy. If you are the second person there and you witness that happening, what the fuck makes you stay? The guy in the tent? Yeah. Yeah. Or- yeah. <laughs> Why would you stay? Oh, look at that guy. He keeps fucking dying over there. He's got six seconds. <laughs> and, he looks, and he looks terrified. <laughs> but I don't, But we don't know who the second person is that gets stuck in this, like, essentially the area that the spooky entity looks over and goes, I'm keeping you now. Mm-hmm. Well, here's another thing. If you're trapped in a loop, you can't go see what the other loops are. So the folks from the camp oh, can't duh. go yeah, see right. the cabin. They can't go see Chris and Mike. Or Shitty Carl. Or Shitty Carl's oh, in his own loop. That's girl, a three-hour like, loop. When you draw the map, they mention, oh, here's a trail to one loop to the other. And someone's like, there's more than one loop? Mm-hmm. Right. One and of the characters like, says that. Mm-hmm. this compass, not, okay. Because the entity will also switch, like, what your surroundings look like so that you get lost, so it'll trap you. Mm-hmm. But. Hal was able to pull the boys out of the car, Mm -hmm. which is a long ways away from camp. But it's like right on the other side of that border. border. Oh, right. But that seemed like quite a ways. And like, so maybe one one loop encompasses several other ones. Well, there's a, this is just my theory. This is like not a thing that is corroborated by anyone, but. In that first scene, it's coming up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, In the first scene where Hal takes Justin back to his uh, room, there's a map on the wall of all the different loops. And in the upper left hand corner, it is a loop that goes off the map. It's like a huge, Hmm. huge loop that we don't see the other end of. So I kind of wonder like, has it spread past the camp? Are there larger loops outside? Of the camp. Mm-hmm. Are they going to make another movie? Well, <laughs> all of their movies are in the Shitty Carl universe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do they like, call it that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. I, I like that. I like that. 
<laughs> instead of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Funny the you mentioned that. Oh, right. <laughs> They're working on Marvel stuff right now. Yeah, one of them's working on, is it Loki? or is it? They're no, both the... doing the entire season two of Loki. Oh, that's cool. Wow, oh, good for them. I liked season well, one of Loki. Well, good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They also did two episodes of Moon Knight, which I watched over the weekend, oh, which yeah. was yeah. fine. Yeah. Their episodes were the best ones, for sure. <laughs> wow. Okay. Day three. Justin and Aaron go out to the middle of the lake, where Aaron tells Justin he wants to stay. Justin dives down and retrieves the tape from the lake floor. The brothers argue over whether to stay or not, but Justin forces them to leave. They go to say goodbye, and Hal asks if everyone can watch the tape from the entity, which ends up embarrassing them. Hal, Justin, and Aaron step outside and have an argument over what Justin did, which is lie to the public and the press about the cult when they left. Mm-hmm. Hal asks Justin to leave. I was just expecting to see little frog boy Jason in the bottom of the lake. <laughs> um, I was personally relieved that nobody was castrated. <laughs> I was really worried about that. <laughs> that was bothering me. It was they, on my mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was happy for them. I was like, cool. They can just. All right, cool. You guys don't have to live can, in absolute yeah. misery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's food, drink, and love. Yes. They've, it's all Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Um, this is where we see footage from Resolution. It's Justin Aaron and Smiling Dave in the white shirts, and they're trying to like, sell Mike on the cult, mm-hmm. which I just think is fun. We're using footage from a movie that's from, made five years ago. Uh, yeah. And I didn't know that, and I think that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do like, I don't like it when a whole movie's found footage, but I like it when there's bits of pieces of earlier pieces of the movie that are kind of like warped and tweaked and thrown in different ways. And they do this later in this movie. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. show you the higher up angle of different things. I like mm-hmm. things like that a lot. So that added a lot to, to this movie for me. So I think probably my favorite scene of the whole movie is this lake scene. I, I think that's weird, and I think it fits in with what we've been learning so far, you know, that the, the entity will communicate with you in a certain way. You have to be open to it. Also, Justin is into fishing, so that's maybe a kind of conduit. Um, oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, I, I like this. And you, we still don't exactly see much or anything. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to tell mm-hmm. by that aerial shot if we're seeing a shadow or something or not. I, I This scene totally works for yeah. me. And I liked how it introduced us to, like, that lake is huge. It introduced us to another larger geographic area mm-hmm. that they were there. So it's like, okay, something else is here. But I did love that aerial shot where you are getting that glimpse of, you know, it's not just a dust and a shoe in the road. Now it's like, huh, like the circular pattern. So... I also like it. I still thought it like, was aliens. It's in the air. It's in the water. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's outside of the area mm-hmm. it's sending tapes like it's just all encompassing mm-hmm. right yeah so that's what the lake scene did for me they also said that was the hardest to shoot yeah their boat was spinning all around because <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep a boat still on the lake yep. especially if you're just two guys who row a boat out <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> um and then this is also where aaron finds out that justin like essentially lied about the cult when they left and made up all this shit Right. This is where you find out conclusively that all that was bullshit. Which... Well, didn't he tell his brother he was molested? I don't think so. <laughs> or I don't remember it. I don't remember that either. Okay. Oh, he... Did he say Anna fiddled with them or... He How do you know suggested she that oh. Anna used to make eyes at him. And then Aaron's like, women can't be pedophiles. Right. This is the little oh. pedophile argument. <laughs> yeah. When they're in their bunk beds. Right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> women can't be pedophiles. Yes, they can. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> it's like the little brother is like, yes, I can. I'm going to go. Gonna... <laughs> All right, night three. After realizing the car battery is dead, Justin wanders into the woods where he runs into Shitty Carl, who tells him that everyone is stuck in a bunch of looping prisons, man, like shitty pods of time. He'll help Justin get back to Aaron if he gets him a gun from the gun nut tweaker. Meanwhile, at the camp, Hal and Tim argue about something, and Tim tells Aaron, don't do it if you don't want to. Shitty Carl. This is where we actually 
get to meet him and not just see him angrily storming through the scene. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I liked seeing somebody outside of like where they were. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, he's on the outskirts of the, where they are. So there's, and there's then, other people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I thought it was cool too that we see like his corpse hanging from the rafters and then he's there and that gives Justin more insight. Or who is Aaron? Aaron. One of Justin. Justin. Mm-hmm. It gives them more insight about wait, why, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought, and plus us as viewers who are still trying to figure out what the hell's going on, right. I thought that was really cool. There was a lot to learn from that scene. And also, I just really liked that scene because I liked him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're both really good. And you also just get so much information it's mm-hmm. like shitty carl's like here it is this is what's happening no one else will say it there you go yeah which is right. important because that guy's on his own that guy's in that barn on his own with his bike in a three yeah. hour loop i hate when he's like it doesn't let me sleep it doesn't let me dream so mm-hmm. that my mind doesn't leave here like oh my god this guy's mm-hmm. been on a three hour loop since 2009 yeah yeah that sucks. thing that thing hates him yeah that's a- I think his name is Shitty Carl. That, no, the freaking tent guy. That's the worst. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, day four, Aaron receives photographs of himself from the entity and asks Hal about it. He leaves the camp to try and find Justin. Justin comes across Chris and Mike, who are in a different nearby loop. They help Justin before lighting their cabin on fire before their loop resets. Aaron stumbles upon a man in a tent who's stuck in a six-second loop. That was the first like creepy thing to me mm-hmm. in the movie was the six second loop guy. He looks very disturbed well, and upset. I believe it. <laughs> I want to know what's happening to him. And I like too how he made eye contact and spoke Yep. Yeah, as that, he was going through that. That was cool. Until yep. it was a lady with a hose with some like brown and red juice on the inside. Do you watch oh, yeah. the, uh, uh, the footage? You get a shot of the inside of how they made the blood spatter on the window. <laughs> She just go, and then she laughs. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, that was a really creepy, yeah. good scene. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So, is there a rule that you can't look across a border of a loop or something? I think you, if you're trapped in it, you can't see beyond it. Right, but you can see into a loop because once Justin leaves the house and the house resets. I'm talking about uh, Chris and Mike. Gun- yeah, 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 yeah. So he can see into the loop, but they can't see out of a loop, mm-hmm. right? Okay. I think so. Maybe it depends on where you are. When the house resets, that's the first scene of Mike in Resolution when he walks, like when he gets to. It's like the cover of. Mm -hmm. It's the same house and everything. Mm -hmm. Justin's dad owns this property with the house and the trailer and shitty Carl's random shed. Hmm. And then they just rented a children's camp nearby. Wow. I wondered how they shot there. Yeah. It's quite a bit of um, space for, I'm sure, not that much budget. Yeah. Um, Hal says that... He thinks maybe the entity is made of impossible colors, which is a nod to Lovecraft and Colorado, Colorado space, space, which made me think of Christopher because he doesn't like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I hated it. I oh, my God. Boy, you talk about a failure. Yeah. Even, when the, <laughs> even when the mom is chopping off her own fingers, I'm just bored. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry to hear that you didn't like Chris and Mike because I find them very funny. <laughs> I liked Chris and Mike. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I, liked, I didn't like Hale very much. I just thought he was up to something smarmy. I didn't like, and I just felt like everyone else had like some sort of ulterior motive. But again, I think I liked those characters because they weren't in the main camp, yeah. which is why I liked Mike and Chris and Shitty Carl because they were outside. They're little like eating together and drinking beer and just shooting the shit like, oh, everything is just happy. And oh, I think that. I think that it's not even the the characters that I didn't like. It's the I think it's the acting, honestly. Really? Because like the youth pastor guy, like he is up to something, kind of, you know. And I so in, in that way, I think that he's effective and he's believable. I he, feel it's like creepy. The, His he gives yeah. that creepy vibe of like. Ooh. I feel like I feel like the guys on the outskirts are like they're 
it's like they their buddies that they didn't want to pay to be in the movie you know who who had never acted before is kind of what it felt like to me there was something there was just something about their performances that were like well this was written by a seventh grader oh you know and like that that shook me a little bit and some of the like tweaker and meth and stuff like that like, yeah, okay it just felt those guys felt like a lazy way to explain an interesting idea of these guys are stuck outside in the middle of something else. I realize that we're but supposed to be... it's their movie. Like, Resolution was their movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I didn't see that. Maybe there's a kind of tonal problem because the rest of the movie is kind of serious. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden mm-hmm. you show up and That's you ex- get... Yeah. Do you have That's any exactly drugs or what crack at all on you? <laughs> What's that? Yes. Do you have any drugs or crack yes. at all on you? Yeah. That's a, I think that's, a, that's exactly like it. We've walked into clerks. Yeah. There's just something off about it when, when we're at a point where we're trying to understand what's happening in this movie and we're given these like really like – like caricature characters where there's like, the hurt, I do drugs, <laughs> you know? And um, so – and – where are we actually supposed to be geographically? Are we supposed to be in California? Mm-hmm. Do people like this exist in California? Because it felt <laughs> like we were suddenly in, like, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry to people in Arkansas, but <laughs> but I didn't frack Our your lands. Our deepest condolences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder, if you ever watch Resolution, I'll be interested to see if your opinion changed. Because they have so much more to work with sure. there. Sure, yeah. Because they're not stuck in the loop in that in that movie, not um, yet. Okay, so we get more than their however long their loops are. One week. One week. And resolution okay. is the one week. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. End of the movie. Justin and Aaron run into each other near an abandoned trailer home and walk back to the camp. Aaron tells Justin that he's going to stay. The cult sits down for their final meal. Uh, The brothers return to camp, and Tim unlocks the locked storage shed. They watch a replay of previous scenes from the entity's perspective and then watch as the ascension takes place. Justin says he'll stay at the camp with Aaron, but Aaron says they can leave. (laughs) The entity uh, chases them, and the two drive out of the camp. I loved all that, seeing the found footage and the other angles of mm-hmm. yep. I thought that to me that was creepy like somebody's watching you so I love the footage of just watching the brothers walk around and I like the footage of the, the above yeah you got to see what happened to the ball I just really liked having that high above that aerial shot of that something is out there something is watching and they call it the monster only once or more than once but whatever it was I'd like to me that made it seem a little scarier they had that Small vibe of, of scary was like, oh, sh- something's watching. Yeah. Do you remember when they were on the mountain just before they got reunited? Remember that? And there's the mountain lion. Mm-hmm. And the the camera. Uh, or there's, oh, a, pro- yeah, there's yeah, a projector. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, projector the playing projector, them. Right, mm-hmm. right. And that, like, camper thing, too. Mm-hmm. Up right. There. And that, so here's the thing. Do you remember how the camper just showed up? Yeah. It just went bloop. Yeah. So was that because you entered into a loop and now mm-hmm. you can see inside mm-hmm. the loop? Yep. Mm-hmm. Part of it is also, mm-hmm. don't forget those little clay pillars thing. So that's how you also know you're going right, into that's another loop. That's how he whatever. finds his brother. Right. right. At that part in the cast commentary, they go, oh, we did that for real. <laughs> Just like made it appear. <laughs> they absolutely didn't. It was just there's a, a pic. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Because no. <laughs> earlier there's an uh, there's a Polaroid that has a picture of the camper, and he's got to mm-hmm. look for the camper. Mm-hmm. He has the camper, and he has a map. Oh, that's, that's one of the right. set pieces from Resolution. They that's like cool. go inside, and mm-hmm. yeah, right. yeah. There's some scene well before this where we can kind of see the like we see the younger brother is like outside of a loop and can't see the uh, can't see somebody else. Anna, oh, Anna, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's when that's that, that's when he takes off to go find his brother. Right. But it's like the first time we can kind of sort of the, that's where see we the, see the, the in bubble quotes. in front of our face. Yeah. Somewhere. Exactly. So I was yeah. picturing it like lots of these little bubbles like together yeah. and you can walk from one to the other but you can't you can't yeah. see. Well, and then we see all the loops. Remember the scene on the mountaintop with mm-hmm, the camper? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You see the bubbles. Right. And you see when the entity spews out mm-hmm. that tape and it lands in the valley. 
Remember that? Mm -hmm. And it's pretty jarring. It happens all of a sudden, and you're looking mm -hmm. at the valley, and there, and the loops start to slowly appear as domes. Hmm. Under the dome. Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> this now. Okay. Yeah, they, they're kind of sparkling, yeah. which is really cool. Right. So I'm going to get the quote wrong, but there's a quote in this part about um, we're just taking someone else's shit. And I took it to kind of mean... <laughs> where the shit and the monster is just playing with us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you remember the quote? Yeah. I can't even it's something remember like that. who said it. Probably maybe Carl or I, I have no idea now who said it. Yeah. But it's a great quote. It is good. Yeah, Shitty Carl says something about, like, we're just playing stories for that thing's amusement. Yeah. yeah. And that's a huge part of resolution is... Mm -hmm. Never mind. <laughs> Just watch it. It's pretty good. <laughs> it sounds like we need to watch it. <laughs> well, because I mean, the monster is watching and filming. And I did like that shed with all of the old media. Yeah. Finally, mm -hmm. when Tim unlocks it, when like the ascension's almost here, he unlocks it so the brothers can go in and see. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that. That was very creepy to me. Yeah. All right, Tim. It's been, been going on for that. so that's, long. That's our be, little puzzle like box the, in the middle of the movie that we've been wanting to see yeah, the whole time. Yeah. But at one point, did he say it was like sewing supplies? He in said there? it was brewing supplies. Oh, right? brewing. Was that I what, rewound was that it. You know, you know, brewing or rowing? I thought he said I know, sewing. I yeah. Another <laughs> testament to the audio in this movie, but yeah, yeah, because we had to rewind it. I'm, I think it was brewing. Cause brewing it, makes sense because based yeah, on him being him, but rowing, it's like where's the where yeah. are you guys rowing? Because well, anyway. too, you could think about all of the years and how long it's been going on. Because mm -hmm. some of the characters, you can't really quite tell what time period they're from, other than the guy in the tent, which is this very mm -hmm. long time ago. And then Tim seems also like he's from an earlier time. Mm -hmm. But right. watching the tape, it, you can really see like how large it is, yeah. how ongoing the expanse of this. Right. Right, I just got it that the reason Tim unlocks it is to give them enough time to figure out and maybe get out of there. Before, mm -hmm. Because yeah. Tim is kind of on their side yeah. in a way that Hal is not. He unlocks it and then goes straight to the Ascension to get mm -hmm. yeah. eaten or whatever the right. fuck. <laughs> My eyes were really scanning all the tapes to try to find what the earliest year was. Not yep. that they're going to mm -hmm. explicitly tell us when it started, but I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently the front, the guy, the, and the tent guy, they call him the frontier guy from the 1800s. Mm. Mm -hmm. Imagine doing the same thing over and over for six seconds for a hundred plus years. <laughs> um, Mike's wife escapes on the bike. I love that because then she can come back and keep looking for him. Wait a minute. He's gone. <laughs> He's stuck. I don't remember that. She's pedaling away. Oh, that's right. I do. Yeah. Okay. I also love when they uh, come upon the Ascension. Justin's like, they're coming back. Like, because little baby Aaron's like, no, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys think they were going to make it out? I thought there was going to be a false ending, you know, mm -hmm. where they, they wake up. Whew, good thing we made it out. And then it's like something kicks them right back into the loop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't really think about it. I was just like, oh, here we go. Here we go. And they were just like racing against time. I thought that was cool. And I did like the how the visual of them like driving into like the other vehicle on the other side and they make it to the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that little gecko on the ground. <laughs> 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 well, then, too, you have like the cheesy brother moment of like, I'm going to let you make your own decisions. I'm going to support you. You can drive. And uh. then I just like, I'm like, oh, we came full circle. They yeah. broke their interpersonal loop. Yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. The so it was the fun <laughs> <made along> the <laughs> <laughs> What about those weird space sculptures? Oh yeah. Remember oh, like those? the dragon? Is mm -hmm. this like you know, the space jockey from Alien? There was a giant dragon. Yeah. The dragon is real. That actually exists in California. And then the other ones were models that they made and filmed on a green screen and then Oh, they were really tiny, yeah. Mm -hmm. So but what did they represent? represent in the movie? I think they represent like different cultures interpretation of the entity. Of the monster. I see. Okay. Yeah. I think one of them's on the it's on my Blu-ray cover. I don't know if it's on the poster or not. I don't okay. remember that. There's this, this it was brief. Okay. <laughs> Super brief. It's like I really don't remember this. They, they were one on the gigantic, poster. weird, almost Here's like one. where were they? 
They walk by him right before. They're like big metal. Oh, I do remember. Just like metal sculptures. Okay, and it was, and I just understood it to be okay. That's just like you know art. Yeah. You know, little, going on a little, little art walk. Little whittlings that the entity thing made. <laughs> art walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> art walk. Aw. I kind of wish they didn't make it, and it ended grim, mm-hmm. personally. With but, them in there forever. Yeah. But you want to kind of leave it open to like make you know six more movies. Yeah, Ooh, keep, the uni- keep the universe <laughs> open. Well, I don't know if it'll actually come to fruition, but uh, they did an interview last year where they mentioned that they are still like thinking about The Endless, but as a TV series in the future. Mm-hmm. So, I do like the idea. See. I mean, I could. it doesn't really matter. I can go either way with whether they stayed in or out, but I kind of like the idea of them being out and then them being out and knowing what that is over there and then just having that be like, that would drive still, them nuts. That's still existing and happening as they go about their daily lives, just like knowing that these different loops exist mm-hmm. out there. But the, also it's going to be very, very tempting to um, revisit at some point. Their other movies are fun, too, because there's like varying degrees of like Easter eggs, essentially. But like the red flower is part of, I think, every movie that they've made. So there's like all these little like moments where you're like, is this expanding? Like, is this spreading? Or is this always been here? And we're just seeing mm-hmm. like different iterations of these things. And that's creepy. I think that's a cool, creepy element. I think it's, yeah. yeah. I, think it's really cool. I think that those two, now that they're out, they should become filmmakers, tr- truck drivers, and they should uh, <laughs> start doing the beer deliveries. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> just a casual visit. <laughs> The last thing I want to mention is in the credits, Justin's dad is um, craft services, but he's also credited as a spiritual advisor. (laughs) Family film, you guys. It's a family production. Find people you like and make projects and create. Be creative with them. Any last thoughts before we rank this? As always, I loved the chance to watch this and talk about it because I have so much more appreciation for the movie. We shouldn't even say that because we say it every single time. (laughs) It's true, though. No, I mean, that's really awesome. And, I mean, Christopher, you and I both saw this and totally forgot that we even saw this. And then we watched it. Analyzed it, we're never going to forget that we saw it now. Right. It's in our Hopefully. brain. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> yeah. If you guys forget, yeah. it's going to be real funny. Well, after or this is, after really the ascension. <laughs> yeah, exactly. After the ascension, we loop back to the beginning, then right. we'll, we'll watch right, it two right. more times. Right. Just one thing I want to mention if you liked this movie, watch Resolution. But if you weren't a huge fan of this movie, still check out their other movies because they vary wildly in tone and subject matter. Mm-hmm. And you can tell, like, it's always their style, but, like, Spring is a romance, which is not mm. for me. Mm-hmm. But they're all different. So yeah. give it a try. I think they're very talented um, writing, directing, doing a lot with less. I mean, there's a lot of skill. The movie looks really cool. Yeah. I can really I can appreciate that about them. Like I it's it's like any criticism that I have for this movie feels shallow and superficial because it's obvious that they worked hard on it and they spent time building this I mean on paper the if you were to try to describe what happens in this movie it's gobbledygook. It doesn't make any fucking <laughs> sense. But they found a way to more or less stick mm-hmm. the landing with that story mm-hmm. like by the end of it you have a you at least have a pretty good idea of what happened and you come away with enough questions that it makes you feel like you should if not watch it again at least read into it more mm-hmm. which is a sign of a pretty good thing <laughs> so yeah. well i think we're ready to rate uh this movie we <laughs> For some reason, do a rating scale of 10 for the overall film rating and then a score of 5 for the scarometer. Who will go first? I will go first. Thank you. Um, I I did not find the movie particularly scary, even though there was that unknown element that we were constantly seeking, hunting, wondering about the the older man in the tent going through the 6 7 second loop was the creepiest and the coolest also that was like some good gore i was ready for good gore at that point in the movie <laughs> i don't think it was scary on the scare meter i'll give it a 0.5 not very scary mm-hmm. and for the overall movie ranking 
I've given lots of positive thoughts. I've given my negative thoughts. Um, I did find some redemption and I really, really liked the guys watching them in the making of and it made me appreciate them as artists and the skill and the talent that they have. And I think that's really cool to have out. I mean, the film business, it's hard. There's so many people who want to write and direct and act. And I think they're successful at what they're doing. Um, but overall, I I did not, I the movie was just not my bag. Two, two times I watched it, I'm just not into it. I don't know who I would tell to watch it. I am glad I watched it, ironically, because of, <laughs> because, well, because I got to hang out with you guys for two hours. Um, but just to, it's another thing to know about. I love absorbing media. You know what I mean? Like, I've read so many, like, strange books over the years that just, like, go out of my head. It's just another piece of media to consume. And this was something that was different. It was well done. Um, with that, I'm still going to give it a four out of ten. It's also what you gave the orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I watched it originally in the spring of 2020, I gave it two out of five. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. So I'm like, I'll just do the math. Oh, out of five. Okay. Right. Two out of two out of five. I thought you said two out of oh, ten. Right. It's like, oh, okay. oh no, no. There's some things that give zeros and ones too, but I gave it a two. There's, it's not a bad movie. It just, I was a little bored here and there, and yeah, just yeah. Sci-fi is sci-fi, sci-fi's hard for me. I'm not a Lovecraft person. Sci-fi is just tricky for me. Mm-hmm. So, sure. anyways, yep. Okay, I am going to give this six out of ten waterlogged toolboxes at the bottom of the lake. Oh, boy. So, uh, you know, I did have some reservations about it, but I wasn't mad at the movie the way I was when I watched In the Tall, Tall Grass, whatever that was. (laughs) I mean, I was yelling. I was fast-forwarding by the tens of minutes. I wish I could have seen that. Oh, boy, you know. So that's a really negative experience watching a movie. This, I really appreciate it. I do stand by the idea that this is one of the better Lovecraft films. Uh, This or... You know, in the mouths of madness, which I absolutely adore, but they have very, very different tones. Mm-hmm. So I think this gets at the kind of, you know, we don't really know what's out there, even though I had some quibbles about that anyway. Uh, Scarameter, I'm going to give this one out of five. I did like some of the creepy scenes. And I also think we say this at the end of almost every episode was this even a horror movie? Partly because. That's a tribute to the horror genre. Mm -hmm. Horror is everything, really. And so I say that in a, I ask that question in a good way. Was this a horror movie? Don't know. But I give it a one because, you know, we're we're already (laughs) aged and um, jaded. I'm so aged. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for that ascension to hit so we can go back. That's right. Uh, as another aged and jaded person, I will also give this a one on the scare meter. Not scary, but um, yeah, the the old prospectory guy in the tent. That was that. That's that's definitely the scariest thing or closest thing to scary that happens in this movie. And the overall idea is scary, and I think it reads better than it than it's watched. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if I read a book that had this premise, I would definitely be more creeped out by it because my mind would be trying to imagine mm-hmm. what was happening up in the sky and whatever. And um, yeah, uh, and that leads me into my overall score, which, like other episodes of this, uh, I will bump it up one number from what I came in with, which I will say six. And the reason that I would that I would give it a pretty average score is it wasn't a movie that made me mad. I had a relatively good time watching it. I felt I felt mostly mostly rewarded by what was what the thing was in the movie and why it was happening. But there were just small things about the execution of it that didn't work for me. And some of that is my own built-in, like, (laughs) strange prejudice to indie movies (laughs) where I'm just like, you guys just don't have all your shit together. And it's like, yeah, of course they don't (laughs) because the the system sucks and it's hard to break into. So with that in mind, like, I 
I would like to watch this again. I would like to watch Resolution mm-hmm. now. And I really am curious to see if if these guys pick up more stuff, if they're if they're able to work with like no offense to, to the tripod? guy because he's a cinematographer. Well, tripod. <laughs> or, like, not to say that the guy isn't a real cinematographer, but I mean, like, a named cinematographer. Like, somebody big who can make their vision look awesome instead of making concessions. And, again, they had to make concessions because that's just how mm-hmm. it works. But I would love to see them with, like, a real team behind them um, and some of their friends still involved, but a real team and, like, some some bigger names um, acting in some of these roles because again I just I think one of my things that kind of shook me out is some of the performances are just kind of like local theater so yeah all that to say not not definitely not my least favorite movie that we've watched for this um, not my favorite but I think I agree with you Christopher that it is one of the more successful Lovecraft style things and I hope that they I hope they try again <laughs> oh they will <laughs> endlessly <laughs> oh my goodness sorry <laughs> well no one's going to be surprised by my ratings <laughs> I'm giving this a 10 out of 10 because I am obsessed with this movie this movie is the gun nut tweaker to me I just I, I love everything about it I'm standing outside the door just looking in the window like yes um, and for my scare meter I'll go with 2 out of 5 I don't think this is like the most scary movie ever by any means. I don't think that's really what they were going for either. But some of the stuff, um, like, again, not that much scares me. But the kind of things that scare me are like when they first cross the border into the main loop. That freaks me out every time. I'm holding my breath because I know that for the rest of the movie they are going to be in danger. Um, Of course, the guy in the tent, just the idea of being stuck in a loop just freaks me out. Mm -hmm. It's very claustrophobic. And Mm -hmm. I, we didn't talk much about like loops and loops in other films. Mm -hmm. It's very, for for me, part of my thing with was the loop portion of it. Like I have a hard time like with a loop Mm -hmm. other than Russian Doll. I haven't seen it. Neither have I. Um, I'll also say that my ratings have been um, sort of, influenced by the fact that I've seen all of their movies and really love and appreciate all their movies. Mm -hmm. And because there's like a shared universe, the more of their movies that you see, the more little like tidbits um, you notice and like appreciate Mm -hmm. across um, all of their different films. And I think that's important to like with creatives, it's a lot to put a world together and to do it successfully and to have other people like latch onto that world and want to know more and go there with you. Mm-hmm. So if you like what you heard today and want to let us know, you can email us at what scares us at aadl.org. Thanks for joining us. This has been what scares us. Mm-hmm.